Thank you. And uh, Snehal is from Bombay, so he showed a lot of you know Bollywood photographs. He took you away, you know, because you are always seeing Amitabh Bachchan, and you know you are seeing uh, all the heroes, and then you forget what data are there. So that was, you know, a very easy way to make you, you know, not to look at what is actually there, but you know, look at all those, you know, and your, all the oldies will remember, you know, the hot favorites. So, you know, that Shashi Kapoor and all, and I don't know, but good collection of photographs, not good data, but photographs are excellent. So we do know that, uh, that you know, we, we, with the onset of this newer arrival of these drugs and with the data which is there, there is no denying the fact that we need to look at cardiorenal risk, we need to look at ASCVD, we need to look at heart failure and we, look, we need to look at CKD. Very importantly, we need to look at CKD also. And uh, because of these new drugs and the data which they have shown, the way that we think about treating diabetes has totally changed. And uh, Dr. Rucha and uh, Dr. Kota also initially, while they talked about the weight reduction and the, this thing and the, and the starting the medicine, now we have got a choice of drugs which will do both the things. You know, we'll, there will be weight reduction, there will be safety, and we are also looking at all these parameters like ASCVD, heart failure, and CKD. And that is the reason why this slide was also shown, where in the last few years, there is a total change in what ADA or EASD or anybody is saying that right from the first you may, if you want to give metformin, you can start with metformin, but thereafter, you always look at what are the problems which are there, whether there is ASCVD, whether there is heart failure and there is CKD, and then you choose the next drug, which could be either a GLP-1 or a SGLT-2. And Dr. Snail was talking about FDA saying so many things about, but ADA doesn't, eh? ADA says that SGLT-2 is still there. The warnings are given by FDA, but the ADA says that there it is there on top of the chart for starting. And we know how the SGLT2 mechanism, how it works. It has got natriuresis, it has got glucose area, and various um, you know, methodologies are proposed about how it could uh, you know, lead to this renal and cardiovascular protection. And we know that there are some common effects and there are some specific effects which are different as far as SGLT2 and GLP1 are concerned. And because of this, uh, you know, common and specific effects, each of them individually gives us the cardiorenal benefits that we see. And if you see this uh, 2021 paper, uh, what, uh, what they said was that uh, we should prioritize the treatment according to the existing evidence. And they said that GLP-1 receptor agonist should be considered in patients at high risk of CV disease, which is what Snehal was saying, and SGLT2 should be considered for patients with heart failure or chronic uh, kidney disease. But what we have forgotten is that we have not really looked at the lifetime risk of CV cardiovascular and renal disease in type 2 diabetes and this study of huge study 4,73,399 patients you can see that those who are CVRD free those who didn't have any CVRD the commonest risk lifetime risk first chronic kidney disease was 54 percent that was followed by CV death which was 41 percent 29 percent heart failure 20 percent stroke and myocardial infarction 19 percent so two important things which you need to look at with this study has shown is that you need to look at chronic kidney disease and I'm sure that in the next five ten years we will be seeing a lot and we will be talking about drugs which prevent this from happening liver and kidney are now the focus of course always ASCVD was always there in the focus right from a long time ago so those who are not having any CV risk factor right now, but they are diabetic, it's very likely that they will develop a chronic kidney disease, the commonest thing which they will develop, and I would be more happy giving them a drug which is specifically in that group, which is going to work in that particular scenario. And this is another thing which was again a huge study, uh, you know, in lakhs of people which showed the impact of chronic kidney disease progression on cardiovascular disease in a contemporary in UK on in individuals with diabetes. And there is a strong association between CKD and CV morbidity and there is a cumulative, uh, you know, uh, the progression is fast and there is a cumulative increase in risk when CKD is there. I would be more happy in treat using a drug which tries to prevent this because I know that as a corollary you are going to get CV disease as a problem later on. And if you see again this uh, Lancet study about 10 years back showed that with a, you know, uh, as the, as the, uh, the, uh, the kidney disease progresses, whether in the form of, uh, you know, EGFR reducing or, uh, you know, the ACR increasing, there is an increased risk of the cardiovascular disease. And so we need to, again, as I told you, look at the, uh, that again.
So if you see the if you see the this study which was published in 2019, again China has done a lot of work and you know they did a they did a meta analysis and they sh they very clearly said that SGLT2 inhibitors show clear superiority in reducing CV and all cause death, hospitalization for heart failure and renal events among new diabetic among the new classes of anti-diabetic drugs which we have. Again, if you see this, uh, which was published in 2021, comparing the CV benefits between GLP-1 receptor agonist and SGLT2 as add-on to metformin, this result suggests a greater cardioprotective effect for SGLT2 compared to GLP-1-RA when used for secondary prevention in adults with type 2 diabetes. If you see the this study, which was published in 2021, uh, again, it said that uh, there is, you know, the mechanism is not very clear. It's still like metformin. We really don't know what is going on. Both the classes of drugs we are using widely. And uh, now we definitely need to use them in patients who are at higher risk. And they say that, you know, treatment with SGLT2 is associated with consistent amelioration of cardiac structure and function and heart failure related outcomes. Uh, again, the gap seems to be leveling off and uh, more and more data are coming. I think after two or three or four years, this, this debate will no longer be there. We will have data for SGLT2 also, which is going to support cardiovascular, and I think we will be having data for, for GLP-1 also, which is going to support renal real-world evidence, and whatever other trials are going on are going to change the way that we look at the drugs in a different way. So we know that, you know, the chocolate brownie, everybody likes it, and the quintessential favorite is vanilla ice cream. But when you combine the two, there's nothing like that. So what I would like to say is that now is the time when we should forget about me and Snehal being on other side. We should think of which patient we can combine. So rather than debating now, I will tell that the time has come that both the drugs are wonderful. Both have got positive effects. If you combine them, and this study again which was published in 2019 shows that if you combine these two, there are lower risk of stroke, lower risk of peripheral arterial disease, lower risk of CV uh, complication, and lower risk of renal uh, problems occurring. So in the right patient, now, especially in India where, you know, affordability and other problems are, you know, very much there, we can, you know, use these drugs to get a better outcome. So with that, I would say thank you. I would want to shake hands with Snail because I think that, I don't think that there is any debate on which class to use. The choice is individual, but wherever possible, I think we should combine the two groups. Thank you.